My name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Welcome to my channel, guys. Uh, sorry, it's been uh, about a week or so since I've done a video. Uh, I've just kind of been looking at the market and uh, trying to find some um, some things that uh, will help us out uh, moving forward. You know, whether it's negative or it's positive information that I'm trying to gather here, it's just things that I think we should all be thinking about. Uh, moving forward to the end of the year since we're now in Q4, you know, what's really going to be happening here? You know, let's look at the coin market cap real quick. 194 billion, you know, went down another 10, 15 billion. Uh, Bitcoin dominance goes up another percent in the last day or two. Uh, it was at 54, now it's at 55. Uh, Bitcoin right now, and I mean, I just refreshed this and it's saying it's at 6264 uh, overall and Ethereum's at 202. And of course, when I start looking at other things like these, it's already down to 6176. And it's just, at the moment, dropping. It's just, it's crazy that the way this works. So we'll get back into that uh, graph here in a second uh, chart. Um, but, you know, it's looking looking red again. You know, pretty uh, pretty bad out there. You know, uh, crypto dark, you know, Bitcoin dark has been up there for a while. It seems like every time it takes a dump, Bitcoin dark goes the other way. So is it hedging against Bitcoin or uh, the crypto market cap itself? Who knows? Dogecoin up, Odom, Dash. Uh, it's finally good to see Dash is doing something. Kin, Waves, uh, True USD, which and Tether. Of course, as you're gonna see these uh, more and more. Um, you know, just hanging around 15% gain or 40% loss. You know, it, it's it's crazy. I, I, everybody knows I don't like Tether and. There's a reason why the manipulation of this market and someone, I was just watching, uh, I believe Kristoff and he was saying that Iran is buying Bitcoin at $24,000. Okay, why? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, why would anybody buy something Bitcoin at $24,000 unless they're doing some sort of wash trading um, on there like, you know, Tether does and True USD and all these other quote unquote stable coin. So let's get into this um, graph real quick and I'll kind of show you what I, the last video I did I was talking about the times that um, the markets open. All right. So green is Asia. Red it is uh, the UK and blue is when Asia closes and when America opens. So I put this on Hong Kong time starting out. And, uh, you know, there's there's quite a bit of correlation. I'm not saying that there, it's it's a direct link, but really, I mean, around, we'll say, uh, let's say the green one here, you know, uh, and I've gone all the way back and I've done this, you know, for, for months on end, just trying to figure things out and how things go. But, um, you know, you start looking at these things and just the correlation, you know, around seven o'clock. So say around six o'clock to around eight, nine o'clock in the morning, Asia time. Okay, this is Hong Kong time. And we're 12 hours difference, so New York is 12 hours difference um, for Hong Kong time. So anyway, um, 7 o'clock in the morning, okay? And then you get these big spikes, and then at 8 o'clock at night, it, right afterwards it goes down. So around 8 to 10 o'clock, something goes on around there too. So let's look on uh, kind of what's going on at the moment. Um, uh, re realistically, these are these are times when futures closes and open. I mean, obviously, cryptocurrency doesn't close, but Asia markets actually do open and close at a certain time, and that's eight o'clock in the morning, and they close at eight o'clock at night. Um, and of course, I've kind of figured this out with you know everybody has to sleep sometime, so you know you give everybody about eight to twelve hour span of trading um, from the time of open, and that's the pro that's that's the issue is finding out what time they actually open. Asia opens up at eight and they close at eight, um, at their time. So it's 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 a it's a different type of game, and that's only their exchanges. I mean, they can go on other exchanges um, and, and play off them if China is able to do that, uh, or Asia, anyway. It's just all of Asia, uh, for the most part, starts around six to eight o'clock and then ends up around six to eight o'clock. So in UK, they're about seven hours difference uh, from Hong Kong time. So uh, around one o'clock. To one o'clock all right in the morning so one o'clock in the morning hong kong time uk opens up or yeah opens up around there seven hours difference so they open up because they're uh they're ahead and a couple hours afterwards not even an hour afterwards not even 30 minutes here comes the big dump here so 
America's in it and the UK is in it for the most part. And Asia's really not in it at the moment as, as far as what I can see for the most on their own exchanges, uh, markets, uh, crypto markets. So is there a direct link? No, it's, it's a correlation and there's no pattern to it. As you can see, there's no real pattern to it. But when these things happen, it's around these times that these are, you know, these big things are happening. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's. I mean, this one right here is one o'clock in, in the uh, in the afternoon Asia time, and then you go, you know, four hours later, five o'clock. You know what I mean? One o'clock to five o'clock, so about four or five hours later, it's when something happens, and anybody can say, "Oh, you know, that that's that doesn't mean anything." It it really it just kind of I'm just kind of telling you guys just to watch it. You know what I mean? When the when they open. Just watch it and see what happens and see if there's actually correlation. And then, you know, were there other times that it dropped and, and dipped significantly um, without, uh, you know, dropping or rising, you know what I mean, uh, hugely? Uh, I've just been noticing it over the last year that this is more, this happens more than not. And it doesn't happen all the time. But when it does, it usually does. Now, these two lines is when futures closes. I believe CME closes from 5 and 6 p.m. So 5 and 6 p.m. and then uh, around 8 o'clock or so is when uh, – actually 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm sorry. It's actually 7 o'clock in the morning and boom. That's when Asia opens. So America closes. Asia opens for the most part. America closes. For futures so that's just bitcoin and i said i was going to show you guys you know i've showed this in other videos uh from when i first started doing youtube uh, videos and uh I, i'm just reiterating it at this point that there is some sort of correlation now this is the 200 ma that's going side here and you know what I, I i should have made a video yesterday i almost could have called it that i was going to drop again another two three hundred bucks and if not going to go down a little bit more just because it's getting close to that 200 ma and it is a magnetic effect to the 200 ma it's either got to go and and cross it and go and go up over it or it's got to get it's got to get away from it one way or the other it can't just stick around there for very long it doesn't stay there very long it can't um just the way that you know the the 200 ma works um with any market for the most part um day traders use it like as, as i said in other uh videos and the 20 ma is day traders use that very very um uh, a lot very much so let's get away from bitcoin real quick let's get into ethereum so i've been mining ethereum for you know a while and you know i moved from coin to coin but you know normally ethereum is like my my base because my gpus are amds and they're mostly focused on uh you know uh ethereum uh, algorithm uh i think it's eth hash uh algorithm so um, what they're saying here is a mega mega boost is on the way for Ethereum mining infrastructure. And basically what they're saying is uh, ETC and Ethereum will get a solid boost after Bitmains adds both cryptocurrencies to a BTC.com mining pool. So they're opening up their mining pools for ETC and Ethereum on BTC.com. And that's going to give them some sort of boost, you know, um, a mega boost on that for mining okay okay all right this sounds good sounds great that you're, you're saying that and this was put on september 5th now moving forward i of course i, I always look at different uh articles whether it be negative or, or positive just to kind of make sure that we're not getting crap you know uh news here so here's one upcoming ethereum upgrade to slash issuance of ethereum by 33 percent Okay, this is bad for miners, all right? So now they're saying a mega boost for mining because BTC.com is going to add their Ethereum and ETC to their uh, to their platform for, for pool mining. Well, here it goes. Ethereum's main developers have decided to cut down the issuance of Ether to two Ether per blockchain reward, per, per block reward. During the upcoming upgrade, Constantinople, that will take place either in October or November, according to Coindesk. This will be a 33% decline from the current three Ether per block uh, reward, uh, reducing the Ethereum, Ethereum inflation rate and boosting its market price. Okay, right there. Inflation rate and boosting its market price. How can you say that? If, if, if nobody is going to mine it, then therefore it's going to slow down 
Uh, how, how is it going to boost the price? You know, and of course, so this is what they say about it. The matter was discussed last Friday during the developer conference, and the decision was based on the reasoning that by reducing the block reward to two by 33%, the network will remain secure and stable while maintaining community support. And I, I don't agree with that. I mean, you've been on three, and it's great to have three block rewards, especially with Ethereum going down all year, every coin all year. Um, and you're going to drop now the block reward and let, you know, people are going to be going somewhere else. Um, the developer of Casper, the upcoming Ethereum proof of stake system, Danny Ryan said the reduction to two ETH appears like a reasonable compromise that could balance the interest of miners and traders. He also said the replacement of GPU miners with ASICs platform through a proof of work change could be another reasonable compromise. So now ASICs are coming into play in the Ethereum uh, uh, algorithm. And now they're going to be taking place with the GPU miners. So again, all these AMD GPU miners are either going to be selling their crap off because they focus their miners uh, on Ethereum and they just don't want to mine other coins because it's not, uh, at least in their minds, it's not profitable as Ethereum. Or they're just not, they're just going to go somewhere else because ASICs are now coming over and they are definitely a lot more efficient um, in mining. So it's not a good thing to see as much as they're saying this is you know upgrade, uh, as much as they're saying here this is going to be a mega boost for the Ethereum mining infrastructure, the change is you're, it's going to take a hit in the change until it completely changes over and gets their sharding going at least in proof of work, um, you know, and, and your uh, your block rewards go back up to at least three. You know, if you go down to two or one, oh my gosh! I mean, you go down to one, no one's doing it. You go to two. You're losing more than 50% of your miners right there, and that's going to slow down the whole uh, blockchain. So it, it is what it is. If that's what they have to do in order to get the POS, fine. But don't expect me to you know, uh, hang around. I've already moved my miners to uh, Metaverse and Ethereum Classic. So I, I'm moving from ETC to Metaverse right now, and I'm not even touching Ethereum uh, until I can see uh, some sort of changes moving on in, in October November. Um, and you know, if we get that cyclical bull run uh, for the retail, Ethereum's gonna go up. They're gonna have a nice little spike there, but it's not, and it's gonna go dramatically down if they don't get their shit together by the end of the bull run. So, um, just going into this real quick, the decrease in issuance could bring, which is from three to two, uh, block reward, could bring more focus to Ethereum as a valuable asset that also provides utility and will likely help the currency's price as well. And it doesn't seem likely that it's going to help the currency's price. I mean, less people are mining it, less people are going to be using it. But yet we do have a lot of dApps and so on that are based on that ERC-20 uh, token and algorithm, you know, the, the ETH hash algorithm. So, you know, we shall see. Metaverse is one of them. Um, and I, I am actually mining more mega hash on metaverse than i am with ethereum than i ever have with ethereum and it's crazy so uh, i'm gonna stick with the uh, etc and uh metaverse for a while just because of this issuance problem this block reward thing and they're already changing it i'm not gonna get caught within the change so is it profitable to mine ethereum at, at you know once they move it down right now it's still at three block reward so it's not bad the price of it obviously is going down and it's down to like 200 bucks we don't think I've ever would see this price again for Ethereum, and look where we're at. We're at the same price again. So uh, I'm going to go over a macro view of the actual coin market cap um, next video, so I can kind of show you what what I think I'm looking at. We're going to have a little cyclical bull run, but it's going to be a little cyclical cyclical bull run, and then in 2019, I believe that's going to be our huge one coming up. ETFs, more catalysts, more people in the in in the game, basically. And it's going to work. So that's just a side. I went off on a tangent. Sorry about that. So I just wanted to show you that reward per block right now is three. Okay. Three plus 0.06 plus blah, 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 blah. And then the last rewards, these were done on the last 24 hours. So if you move this three down to a two, the difficulty is definitely going to go down. The difficulty rate because there's going to be less, pe less people mining it because they're not getting as much rewards off of it. Or, and then it's down to $200. It just doesn't make any sense. So... That's Ethereum for it when it comes to mining, and that's why I moved into Metaverse. So two things that I've been doing that have been making me some uh, extra cryptocurrencies without doing anything. I mean, literally without doing any trading or uh, anything of the sort. 
is crowd holding and empower. And I'll, I'll open up empower here in a second. But crowd holding was a good one. You know, I've, I've done a couple project, um, you know, give my two cents about these projects and what's going on. And they're paying me in, in crypto. And I'm just waiting for them to, to kind of close now um, the posting and then they'll start paying people out. So, you know, it, it's a great thing. I've done what three or four in the past uh, week and I uh, just have to wait until I start, you know, uh, cashing out. So, um, I do three or four a week and then, you know, the next couple of weeks I'm going to start getting cashed out every week. So it's going to be a, a, you know, a constant thing. So, uh, great thing to see. Well, let's move into empower real quick. I got to open it back up because for some reason it logged me out for some odd reason. Uh, and Brave, Brave's working great. Um, you know, got a bunch of bat and they give me a bunch of free bat uh, just to use Brave. And then, it'll, you know, how many times that you look at a website, a uh, certain amount of times, it'll start giving them some of your bat and, and vice versa. If they start looking at yours, you'll start getting some bat as well. So, uh, and Power. So, uh, Power, I'm at 40 bucks right now. Uh, and that's because I think the coin's at five cents now. It took a huge, huge dump. But it looks like it's just one of those coins that goes really dramatically down and then dramatically back up um, in this cyclical kind of thing. But I've, I've learned now that with this, you know, because I can't cash these out for 90 days since by the, from when I earned them. And right now I'm actually going to the marketplace and I have to bid on things in order to reach my daily goals. Well, I'm bidding on silver, silver coins, silver bullion. And I've actually, um, I bid on it and I've won a few. So not only am I hitting my daily goals with that, I'm making some silver and I, you know, I can't cash this stuff out. So I might as well cash it out somehow. And I'm cashing it out in silver, you know, sometimes gold, but gold is just, it's a lot. So I can't really bid on that, you know, the amount of money I have um, that I've generated. So 40 bucks, you know, I make about 10 to $20 a day. Uh, it goes up to 60 and then I spend some on some coins. I bid on some coins and I win. So it's it's a great little platform. So crowd holding and empower are those two that I'm actually doing. And then, of course, you do airdrops, you know, um, uh, 